Welcome to your hotspot channel, In Times News and Reality. Before we start, a letter from God, and a wish from me to you. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. For you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you were my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. For I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you. For you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father. And I love you even as I love my son Jesus. For in Jesus my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father, and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad. Almighty God. The best gift a person can ask for is to be in a happy family, all wrapped up in a beautiful home. With all my love, this is the most valuable wish I can give. Our Heavenly Father in the sky, 
Of all the wishes I can have tonight, I wish you may, wish you might, make my wish come true tonight. Please bless each soul and open their eyes. So they will get their own crown or five of surprise. I wish you the blessing to receive your crown of righteousness and clothing rope of purity. Given to us when entering the feast, to celebrate Jesus' return in 1000 years millennium reign. In the Bible, there are five crowns we can receive. The crown of life, of glory, of rejoicing, of righteousness, and of incorruptible. My the Holy Spirit ignites all true Christians and believers in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, souls for their spiritual eyes to open and see the truth in reality. The end is not near. The end is here. Family, it is time to awake. My life's calling has become very clear to me. As ambassador of Jesus Christ, I want to help awake and save all brothers and sisters in Christ to be ready with me for Jesus' return. To know the prophecy is to know God. Luke 21, Now when you see all these things happening, lift your heads up because your uncle stands for. Basic instructions, before leaving earth. Let's see how much has been given to us. By God in the Bible about the end times. I have in my hand one book that God wrote, the Bible. The book consists of two parts, the Old and New Testaments. Those two parts are 66 individual books, 39 Old Testament and 27 New Testament books. This one book of 66 individual books, has a total of 31,103 verses, where 8,352 verses are prophetic or spoken to future events. We can group the biblical future predictions of these thousands of verses, into 737 different predictions. 6,312 verses, 352 verses already happened throughout the last 2,000 to 3,500 years in separate trains to the letter, exactly just as God's word said it would. Left are 2,040 verses, 215 specific predictions, that can be summed up in 7 major events from God about the end of the world that are in the process of being fulfilled. put your hand in your heart. Do you feel that? It's a simple way of telling that you're alive. But there will be one day where your heart stops beating. And you'll find yourself in one of two places, either in heaven or in hell. And I want you to answer this question. By the end of this video, you will be able to answer this question. Where will I be when I die? I pray that every single person that watches this video would choose heaven. You see, God created hell not for humans. God created hell for the devil and his demons. Eons ago, Satan fell from heaven because of pride. He sinned against God and a third of the angels followed Satan along in the sin of pride. God cast them out and one day they will burn forever in a lake of fire. Hell is also a place where people do go to because they choose to reject the free gift of salvation that Jesus Christ offers all of us. I want you to hear this word carefully. Eternity. This decision that you're about to make as you watch this video, it will determine where you spend eternity. Eternity is forever. We make plenty of decisions every single day. But this decision is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. God doesn't want anyone to suffer and be punished in hell for eternity. And that's why Jesus Come. came. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder. 
and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female, and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven, and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared, because true Christians will be persecuted in the United States like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. Now, I would like to explore the meaning of Revelation 12, verse 12, which states, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. From this verse, we can establish that the devil is on this earth because the Bible says, woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. From this verse, we can also establish that the devil is angry. In fact, the Bible says, Satan is filled with fury because his time is short. And if his time is short, well, that means that the time is nearer when it comes to the return of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you step back to really study and understand what Revelation 12 verse 12 is saying, you will come to understand the reason why sin and evil is so rampant in our world. Now, the book of Revelation is full of imagery and symbolism. And this verse is no exception. It speaks of great war in heaven, where the dragon, also known as the devil and his angels, fought against Michael and his angels. Satan and his followers were defeated and cast down to earth, where he is filled with fury and seeks to cause chaos and destruction. The illustration I want to use to explain this passage is that of a caged lion. Imagine a lion in a zoo, pacing back and forth in its cage. The lion is powerful and dangerous, but is confined to a small space. The bars of the cage keep the lion from causing harm to those outside the cage. Now, imagine that that cage door is suddenly opened and the lion is released. The lion is filled with fury and runs rampant, attacking everything in its path. This is similar to what is happening with Satan. He was once confined to the spiritual realm, but he has been released to roam the earth. He is filled with fury and seeks to attack and destroy everything in his path. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But why is Satan so determined to cause destruction? The answer lies in his rebellion against God. Satan was once an angel of God, but he rebelled and was cast out of heaven. Since then, he's been waging war against God and his people, seeking to lead as many souls as possible astray from the truth. And this is why sin and evil are so rampant in this world. Satan is actively working to lead people into temptation and sin, hoping to draw them away from God and towards eternal damnation. But we should not be afraid, for Jesus has already defeated Satan on the cross. In conclusion, Revelation 12 verse 12 reminds us that sin and evil are rampant in this world because of Satan's rebellion against God. As Christians, we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus has already won the victory over Satan, and through him, we have the power to resist temptation and overcome evil. Let us put our faith in Jesus and stand firm against the schemes of the devil, knowing that our eternal reward is secure in Christ. You and I as believers need to make sure that our focus is only on Jesus Christ. We should focus on the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is Jesus Christ, who explicitly said, no one comes to the Father except through me. You and I need to make sure that we are not found to be the people stated in Matthew 7 verse 22, 
where the Bible says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And in your name perform many miracles? The wise among us will be watchful. They'll see the signs of the times because they study God's word. But the foolish? The foolish will fall asleep. They will miss the signs because of a lack of knowledge. Pray for wisdom, saints of God. We ought to be wise in these times that we live in. We ought to be spirit-filled and spirit-led. We ought to get our lives ready and stay ready, waiting for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to fulfill his promise. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse two to three, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. It's good news that God is going to bring an end to this wickedness and restore us to our heavenly homes. However, until that day comes, the Lord has provided us with road signs to warn us that the time is near. He has provided us with clear signs that we should know that the end is near. The Bible tells us that people will pop up claiming to be the Christ or to be the Messiah, but warns us not to listen. So rather than look at each and everything happening in the world and focusing your time and energy with a checklist of all of the signs of the times, I encourage you to focus your time and energy on seeking God. That should be our sole focus, to know Jesus Christ, to pray and to get to know him more. The Bible is calling us to wake up. The Lord wants us to wake up to the fact that there is a heaven and a hell. There is a day of judgment. I don't know about you, but heaven, from what I've read about heaven, it seems to be the better place. No more tears, no more sorrow, only joy, only peace. Oh, to be in the presence of the Lord for all of eternity to be far away from the sickness and disease of this world, to be done with natural disasters and devastation. I encourage you to focus your time, to have a right relationship with Jesus Christ so that when we stand before him, we will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. by keeping our eyes not just on the sky, but also on the signs around the world. Helps us to stand strong and be ready when our Lord and Savior returns. In this reality report, bringing us up to date on the end time signs. One day equals one millennium, or one thousand 
years. So understanding that, let's reread the prophecy. After two millenniums, he will revive us. And on the third millennium, he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. You see, the prophet was saying that the Israelite nation would be revived, not in two literal days, but in two millenniums. Again, a day to God is a thousand years. And so let's see if this prophecy was fulfilled in history. Okay, well, first of all, most historians agree that Jesus was crucified in 30 AD. And at the point of his crucifixion, we have seen that that is the point when the shepherd was struck, when their persecution began, when they lost their nation. So in 30 AD, that marked the beginning of their fall. So if you add 1,000 or one millennium to 30 AD, that brings you to 1030 AD. So from 30 AD to 1030 AD here, you have one millennium or one prophetic day after they were scattered. But the prophecy said that it would be after two days that they would be revived. So if we count from 1030 AD to 2030 AD, you have the second millennium or the second prophetic day. Now remember, Hosea said that after two days, they will be revived, but on the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence. So when does this third day begin? Well, from 1030 to 230 AD, that's the second day. So the third day is from 2030 AD to 330 AD. So he says that on the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence which begins the third day beginning on 2030 AD. But before that, he says, on the second day, they would be revived. So I wanna paint the picture. He says on the third day, that's when they would be raised to live in the presence of God. But before that, in the second day, that's when their nation would be revived. So we should be able to look and see it somewhere close to the third day. But in the second day, we should see in history where their nation, Israel, was revived. And keep in mind that in Jewish days, the day ends after sunset. So in the sunset of the second millennium, we should see some kind of revival with Israel, okay? So history shows us that after hundreds of years of being scattered, abused, and banished from Israel, that amazingly, the Jewish people found victory against their enemies and their nation, the land of Israel, was revived and established in 1948. Why is that important? Because 1948 is in the latter part of the second day, but it's right before the dawn of the third day. You see, <laughs> prophecy is so precise. It's so precise that even the times and dates line up with history. Meanwhile, on May 14th, 1948, the new government headed by David Ben-Gurion is installed in Tel Aviv. Thus, for the first time since the Roman Legion destroyed Jerusalem in the year 70 AD, the Jewish people have a nation of their own. Thus, history was made as the Jewish state of Israel was born. Conceived in strife and weaned on violence, Israel has flourished to become a constructive voice in world affairs. 
Her flag became a symbol of hope in a troubled world. The Old Testament prophets predicted that after 30 AD, when the shepherd was killed, that the Jewish people would be scattered and taken captive by the nations. We saw that. That's happened. And then it predicted that after two days, but before the third day, they would be revived. That happened in 1948. Well, guess what else? Even the date of 1948 has significance within the Bible. Because if you study Bible chronology, you will find that Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, was born exactly 1948 years after God created Adam. So not only does the prophetic code of one day equaling a thousand years show the millennium that Israel would be revived, but even the exact year of his revival finds symbolism in the birth of their father, Abraham. Now, the prophecy isn't over. So it says that after two days, they will be revived. We see that happened in 1948, in the second millennium or the second day after Jesus was crucified. But notice what else it says. On the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence. Just a few interesting facts to keep in mind. We've all heard of calcification. You can decalcify your pineal gland. It's been calcified predominantly by fluoride. Fluoride added to your water supposedly just to stop those getting cavities. It's strange how it calcifies the most important possible gland for us to have any form of spirituality. And here we are at a time where many people think they're just bags of skin without any spirit, soul or connection to a higher being. Because their pineal is calcified and they can't feel it. It's atrophied by that which has been put into our water and poisoned through processed foods, processed waters using fluoride, and also the media which we take in such as television. The talk ultimately shuts it down all at once too. Because you surrender to a false light instead of to the natural light, which is where the photons can come to you. If you stare at a false light all the time, you're not going to get those photons. The pineal gland is a very important thing. Christianity spoke about it, Hindu faith speaks about it, Buddhism speaks about it, all faiths across the planet spoke about it. All ancient religions have the pine cone symbology. You must eat right, you must go into the dark to see the great light, and you must understand that this tool in the center of your brain is where you will find out how you can live your highest good. We are the world have technology that's 40 years advanced of what the general public knows. Yeah. What, is, what is your take on that? Ooh, that's a low number now. He used to be right, but it's actually increased significantly. Uh, so I've been Mom, given top secret clearance in private space through my space agency, First Class Space, down here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And you attend the space symposium, you're sitting there with the big brass, you're sitting there with all these big you know corporate ceos from these space agencies and you find out that we're more now 300 years ahead of the general population 300 whatever you could think of it's already been done already been done and i'm talking about whatever you can think of so that would that would usher in i mean 300 years that would usher in the golden age that you say that we're heading into now yes why are they withholding this technology do they not want us to be in the golden age yeah, they don't want that. The powers that be, they truly feel, I'm talking about the elite of the elite, the true, the, the true hegemonic oligarchs that run the planet, the five people and with the, you know, that descend down into 100 families. They literally have stated out of their own mouths that, that they feel that they are, have the right to rule over humans. They don't even call us people, they call us humans. And they believe that the richest family in the world might also control the world. We heard about this insane story from the book, The Rothschild Family, discussed on The Tim Ferriss Show. It all started with Meyer Amel Rothschild, a successful banker who had five sons, Nathan, James, Amel, Solomon, and Carl. These five sons were sent off on a mission of world domination. They were sent to key sectors of the world, like London, Paris, Vienna, and Naples, to establish banking power, and it worked. From this foundation of banking, all five brothers became immensely wealthy and created a massive family fortune, which was used to buy properties all around the globe and expand the 
business even farther. Now the Rothschilds manage things like real estate, financial services, farming, energy, mining, winemaking, and nonprofits. They pretty much have a hand in everything. This, along with their massive fortune, which probably isn't entirely public, has led to a ton of conspiracy theories the past few years. The tentacles reached far back into the last century. But it wasn't until victories in Europe and Japan and the onset of the Cold War that political and economic conditions became perfect for actual execution. A conspiracy bigger and more secret than the Manhattan Project. More odious and far-reaching. No sooner had we defeated Germany than a new threat started appearing in skies over America. Drawn to Earth by the latest threat to extinction, the H-bomb. Explosions acting as transducers, drawing alien life forms through wormholes in spaceships using electrogravitic propulsion. Advanced extraterrestrial species visiting us, concerned for mankind and the threat of our self-destruction, forestalling our annihilation through their own self-sacrifice, and crashes at Roswell, more importantly, places like Aztec. World leaders signed secret memos directing scientific studies of alien technology and biochemistry. Classified studies were done at military installations S4, Groom Lake, Wright Patterson, and Dulce. Extracting alien tissue, tests were done on unsuspecting human subjects, and elaborately staged abductions in craft using alien technology recovered from the down saucers. <laughs> including human hybridization through gene editing and forced implantation of alien embryos. Why do such a thing and lie about it? Our own government. Your own government lies as a matter of course, as a matter of policy. The Tuskegee experiments on black men in the 30s, Henrietta Lacks. What are they trying to do? That's the missing piece. But it's not hard to imagine. A government hiding, hoarding alien technology for 70 years at the expense of human life and the future of the planet driven not only by corporate greed, but a darker objective. The takeover of America. And then the world itself, by any means necessary, however violent, or cruel, or efficient. By severe drought, brought on by weather wars, conducted secretly using aerial contaminants and high altitude electromagnetic waves, in a state of perpetual war, to create problem, reaction, solution scenarios to distract, enrage, and enslave American citizens at home with tools like the Patriot Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, which abridge the Constitution in the name of national security. The militarization of police forces in cities across the U.S., the building of prison camps by the Federal Emergency Management Agency with no stated purpose. The corporate takeover of food and agriculture, pharmaceuticals and healthcare, even the military in clandestine agendas to fatten, dull, sicken, and control a populace already consumed by consumerism. And I encourage you all to go shopping more. A government that taps your phone, collects your data, and monitors your whereabouts with impunity. A government preparing to use that data against you when it strikes. And the final takeover begins. The takeover of America by a well-oiled and well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill, and subjugate. Happening as we sit here. It's happening all around us. The other shoe waiting to drop. It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. What will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia. Or a simulated alien invasion using alien replica vehicles that exist and are already in use. An alien invasion of the U.S. The Russians tried it in 47. You can't say these things. I'm going to say them tomorrow. It's fear-mongering. Claptrap, isolationist, techno-paranoia, so bogus and dangerous and stupid that it borders on treason. Saying these things would be incredibly irresponsible. It's irresponsible not to say it. His name Especially. actually means the possessor. In the Bible, it says Baal. Baal means Baal. the possessor. Yeah, we call you know him as Baal. Baal, he is the possessor. So the first thing, his job, what he did with ancient Israel, is he caused them to forget their God. And he caused them to start driving God out. The spirit of Baal in America, in the West, has been driving God out. So we said the schools we have, we have uh, from culture. Literally, the Bible says he caused them to turn away from the commandments. Literally in America, we have actually cast down the Ten Commandments. Same thing. So what we are watching, it's the repaganization.
of America. His job or his mission of this prison is to take a Christian, quote, Christian nation or Judeo-Christian nation and turn it into a pagan nation. And that is exactly what has been happening. In fact, there's one thing that Baal actually, man I won't go into it, actually manifested in New York City. The sign of Baal massively, we won't go into it. But the thing is that he is the first spirit. And so he's the one who says, now the other gods are gonna come in. I don't care how long he works, and I don't care what he does. There is no job worth two million dollars a year. That's why they pay athletes these fantastic salaries. I was listening to the radio the other day. They just contracted to pay one one player on one team six million dollars a year. Can you believe this? And why is that? It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become resty? And when the people are asking questions and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor, he sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum. And he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. He has great chariot races and football games and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything in the scheme of the entire world so that they don't have the time to learn what the truth is. It is the Roman circus. What is it? He was asking, what is it that he saw? He said, this is an ephah that goeth forth. This right here is an ephah. What does that look like to you? Looks just like them things the Pentagon has been spotting. Now we go down a little more, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. So God says there is a woman that sits in the midst of the ephah, the UFO, and that she is wicked, and that this is a curse that's going to go forth over the face of the whole earth and enter into the house of the sinners and literally destroy them. So let me tell you guys, when this happens, they're going to be saying it's aliens. Do not be fooled. This man right here's name is Aliester Crowley. He's a high-level Satanist who performed all these rituals. So this right here is a sketch of a demon that he channeled during one of his rituals. And the people who claim they've been abducted sketch the same thing. Now look what Eliester says here. He says, today they call them angels and demons. Tomorrow they will call them something else. So his name was Ailey Esther. Why do you think they call them aliens? They were named after him. People need to know about this man because those are going to be a lot of people who get deceived when this happens. Honestly. Satanic rituals is being held in front of the whole world, and people are too deceived to even see what's happening right in front of their eyes. Unmasking the Antichrist. Three, one through five. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. But of course, for all the color and noise, the characters, the invention, there was a dark side to the Industrial Revolution, a darker side to the bull ring. As the beat pounds to remind us of the relentless drive of industry, they drag a beast, a bull, 10 meters high. And enraged by injustice, the bull breaks free and causes pandemonium. Bulls were baited and sold here in the city century for centuries. It's no doubt going to be up to Stella and the Dreamers to try and halt the bull. Stella offers friendship and compassion to take. Happy New Year! Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Most of you are saying, man of God, now I know you're trying too hard. I mean, come on. It's just the beginning of a new year. It seems like anything I try to do in the world, you got something to say about it. Well, brothers and sisters, please remember that the word says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. That means you could literally be rejected by the Lord because of things you did that you weren't supposed to do. Because of things you did not know. New Year's Eve. Sadly, a time when billions upon billions of people blindly stagger their way into what they think is the new year. But today we're going to expose another branch on the satanic tree of Mystery Babylon. You see, there is a very ancient ritual that is done during the new years, what you call celebration I call an ancient ritual. Now many of you know by now one of the foundational warnings that we have been giving you from the Lord during these documentaries like the whole world is a stage series is that mystery Babylon is the uniting together of all the world's religions under one banner this is the great stumbling block of the dragon that is cast before the feet of mankind you see the devil's agenda is to get the lord to be provoked to anger against you 
He knows that we are made in the image of God. And he can't stop us when we are serving Christ. So what he does is what he did in the days of Israel. Remember Jesus warned us in the book of Revelation that in the days of Balaam and Balak, that stumbling block was to cause Israel to sin and commit idolatry. That means to get involved in the practices of pagan religions. And he knew that by doing this, it would provoke the Lord to anger and he would lift his hand off of Israel. God just gave a warning to the whole world by striking the Jesus statue in Brazil with lighting. Many wonder if this is an act of God. Is God wrath coming to mankind for creating graven images against God's commandments? Many believe that God is sending out a very important warning to the inhabitants of the earth. Of course, many people will not take this seriously. Man, and some say that they honor her. So these people, the way they're behaving, guys, they just think that it's all fun and games. Well, if you're following him, knowing all of this, then you are crazy. You are out of your mind. Jesus said that hell was not made for man. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. But man choose to go to hell because they want to live in wickedness and lawlessness. And they do not want to obey the commandments of God. They spent millions of dollars repairing that statue whenever it gets hit by lightning. And I recently made a video of that. I will link it to the end of this video so you can check it out. So I do not understand why Brazil has a Christ Redeemer statue that is 100 foot tall when they are mocking God, they're mocking Jesus. Is this how you say thank you? During the 2023 Brazilian Carnival holiday weekend, record-breaking rainfall reached 682 millimeters in 24 hours, which caused deadly floods and landslides across the state of Sao Paulo. Well, the way I see what happened to Brazil, God clearly show a glimpse of his power to flood out the mockery of Jesus and God at the Brazilian Carnival. I swear these artists worship the devil You see the symbols in their videos, it's not accidental They sold their souls to be famous, it's not a debt they can settle Just check the lyrics, you can hear it on every instrumental These award shows aren't about the music or visuals They're designed to be identical to satanic rituals You buy tickets to concerts, you're not aware they're performing Black masks and the fans, they're part of the ceremony The industry been infected, Illuminati agendas Communicate with the youth, these are messages in our records It's all black magic, wanna hear the devil play the track backwards This is facts, witchcraft in our rap albums celebrities have clearly been cursed research the conspiracy first <laughs> it's so obvious they're taunting us with lil uzi vert said slow sound it out lil lucifer there's devils around me close on they mango so i walk through the valley they follow in shadow that's what we want to do is look at satan certainly not to glorify him but to unmask him in order that we might see him for the corrupted and defeated character that he is it's hard to keep up with Sam Smith's identities, but last night's Grammys. So the Grammys is now literally glorifying and promoting Satan on live TV in front of millions of people, many of whom are children. We're noticing because what you said it's important to do this. It was you. You decided this was an important thing to do. And now we're noticing it. And now we're analyzing why it's an important thing. And it really is an important thing because, of course, the imagery of Satan is, is nothing new. The imagery of Satan goes back several thousand years. There are references to Satan in the Hebrew Bible. There are references, obviously, throughout Christian theology to Satan. But it's the picture of the sort of modern Satan as a, as a good character that I think is worthy of note here. The reason I'm bringing this up for folks who missed the Grammys, you know, like nearly all of you, is because last night, Sam Smith and a person named Kim Petras did a number in which they full-on embraced Satanism. I mean, full 
the Melinda Gates Foundation, and around her neck, that's actually an inverted cross, which they use in the occult as a symbol of the rejection of the Jesus Bible Christ. Warns us about, and millions of people around the world have fallen for Satan's deception and start to emulate the celebrities and even go as far as to idolize them. And they don't even know what some of them have done to get their fame and what they're currently doing to remain rich and famous. Your ultimate goal is to be famous? then you're gonna do a lot to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. That's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, so I sold my soul to the devil. Well, needless to say, sold my soul. I swear to listen for now. I sold my soul to the devil. Why is your hand over your eye? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a devil worshiper, what are you talking about? That should not at all be surprising. And, and so, you know, had, had we sold our soul to the devil? Uh, how else can you explain us being here on the right. 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 get on that And people show. laugh and clap. One more time. We sold our soul to the devil? Uh, how else can you explain us being here on the right. 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 How do these two guys get on that Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth, and then, uh... And this is Beyonce's debut. Sasha was in full effect. Sasha is my alter ego. And when people see me, sometimes I think that when they meet me and they speak with me, they're expecting Sasha. And um, I'm really kind of shy, and not really shy, but more reserved and um, nothing like Sasha. I guess I would be very entertaining on the stage. So Sasha comes out. <laughs> Getting ready to go on stage and perform to Sasha Fierce. When does she show up? Usually when I hear the crowd, when I yeah. put on my stiletto, um, when, like, the, the moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you. Uh-huh. Like, that's not normal. This is the type of shit that you see in paranormal. I think he was born out of rage. He was conceived in rage. So he bashes everyone. He threatens to beat people and he's violent. That must be nice to have like an ignorant loud mouth where you can just sort of blame everyone. He wants to be blamed. I don't want to blame him. I, I, I ask him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. Mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our wrongdoings made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus it is not the end of the story my friend you are not defeated by sin because Jesus Christ through the grace of God crucified sin at the cross so that you may have life by turning away from your sin putting your faith in Jesus Christ you don't need to stand guilty and
and hopeless, Jesus Christ has already won the victory for your soul at the cross. Even if you've signed your name in blood, struck a deal with the devil, whatever your situation may be, it is not too late because the cross of Jesus Christ stands as an eternal witness and rescuer to those who need rescuing. Today is the day of salvation and choose ye this day whom ye may serve. Will you sell your soul to the pleasures of this world and walk away from Jesus Christ forever? Or will you bow the knee to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in whom alone there is life, hope, joy, and eternal Christ bliss? Christ died for us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? If his appearance occurred on a Sunday morning, my prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Well family, that is it for now. This is just a glimpse of everything happening around us. I will upload more videos like this soon. Full video links are in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe, to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Family, till next time. I love you. And peace out.